This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1316, Friendventory, Our Vibe Attracts Our Tribe, part two, by Shana Olmsted of shanaolmsted.com. Hello, everybody, and happy middle of the week. Great to have you here again. I'm your host and narrator, Greg Audino, and if you listened yesterday, then I'm sure you're excited for this episode as we will be finishing up the post we began in our last installment. There's a lot more to come in this second part from Shana Olmstead, but before I get to it, I do want to encourage anyone who did not listen yesterday to pause here and go do that so you can hear the full post and have more context entering today's second part. But if you're ready for part two, and so am I, let's jump right back in and continue optimizing your life. Friendventory, Our Vibe Attracts Our Tribe, Part 2, by Shana Olmsted of shanaolmsted.com. Number 3. As it becomes clearer to you who still works in your life as your vibration continues to elevate, letting go of the ones that no longer fit is the next step. It can be difficult to admit to yourself that some of these relationships no longer work, especially if they're long-time relationships or even family members. Our logical mind and society might have tricked you into believing that history and DNA make you trapped in relationships that aren't healthy for you. I'm here to tell you that that is definitely not true. We are born to evolve. We're super fortunate if we were born into families with people that will evolve with us and have found relationships at an early age with like-minded people that are also growing. But that is not always the case. Often we have relationships that are well-suited for us at the time and help us become more conscious, but we eventually outgrow them and need new people at our new level of awareness. As empaths, we are also often drawn to people that need healing and tend to give too much in relationships. As we grow and love ourselves more, we feel the need to take care of others less and understand that every soul is evolving right on time and no one needs us to save them. Number four. We don't always need to completely cut these old people out of our lives. It really depends on the situation and the relationship. As you continue growing into your magnificent, authentic self, it'll become clearer to you whether you need to have no relationship, something limited, or something new. It's okay to continue having more limited relationships with people as you discover who does and does not serve your new energetic system. For example, if you discover that your sister drains your energy, it doesn't necessarily mean to never speak to your sister again. It may mean to limit to phone calls and visits, and to practice shifting your frequency when you're around her. The simple knowledge that the relationship is not feeding your energy system can be very empowering. It's not personal. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing wrong with you for not having the kind of relationship you think that you should with her. It's all perfect and how it should be. Number five. If it becomes clear that someone is toxic, and you do not want to have any kind of relationship with them in the future, that's really okay too. You can have a conversation with them and let them know that the relationship is no longer working for you and you need some space. Sometimes on people's paths of evolution, they've never been told that there's something wrong or that boundaries need to be set. You having the courage to be truthful in the relationship is really a blessing for both of you. You as an empath get to work on practicing assertive communication and setting boundaries which is why this person was sent to you in the first place. The other person gets to learn how to be more compassionate and that their behavior is not acceptable to you. This could help plant a seed for this lifetime or in the future. We're all evolving towards more compassion, and thank goodness you can be an enlightening teacher of love for this person. Number six, as you become more clear on the relationships in your life and begin shifting ones that don't serve you, you're clearing the path for the new, more like-minded people to come in. You have learned so much through the friendventory process about your energy system, what works for you and what doesn't, and how to connect your inner truth about the people in your life that it'll be so much easier in the future to find people that are more right for you in this stage of your evolution. Number seven, this is not a decisive list for everyone because we are all so uniquely unique, but in general, we want to look for friendships and relationships that one, make us feel good. We want energy to flow back and forth and to feel light and energized during and after our time with someone else. Especially as we are on a personal growth path, we want someone else that is also growing and evolving 
and is consciously aware of working on their inner growth. This helps them be a more healthy relationship partner, as well as helping us continue our growth. Two, are positive. We want people that have done enough inner work to understand that our energy impacts our reality. Thinking and feeling positively attracts what we want in our lives, and we want to surround ourselves with people that understand that so that we can continue to keep our energy elevated. Three, help us feel heard and really seen. A basic human need is feeling heard and understood. We need people that really hear us and can validate our feelings and nurture us. This usually takes someone that has done enough of their own inner work that they don't constantly get triggered into their own stuff and can stay present with us and ours. Four, are sensitive and understanding. Again, people that have some understanding of themselves enough to not get triggered and take things personally. And five, are authentic and deep. Sometimes conflict and misunderstanding does happen. It's important to be in relationships with people that are able to speak their truth authentically and be able to hear yours in order to come to a mutual understanding and move forward. Number eight. If you're at the stage of letting people go but haven't quite manifested your full soul posse yet, Here's an exercise to help your energy align to what you want. Visualize multiple times a day, feeling loved, connected, and nurtured by many people in your life. Create the feeling of connection and support that you'll have when you have this lovely soul tribe around you in reality. If you have any relationships in your life like this right now and would just like more, a good place to start is to focus on the feeling that you have in that relationship and practicing transferring that out to the others that you want. Make it bigger. Make it huge, expansive, gigantic, sparkly, and beautiful. As always, the key to manifesting is practicing creating the feeling of gratitude for what you want as if it's already here. Because it really already is. You've just been living in a different vibrational frequency from it. Remember, energy is everything. When you change your energy on a subject, your reality changes. You are an amazingly powerful being with the capability to create anything you want in your life, including amazing and fulfilling soul pod relationships. They've all incarnated with you and are just waiting for you to jump into the frequency of this reality. You just listened to part two of the post titled, For Inventory, Our Vibe Attracts Our Tribe, by Shana Olmsted of shanaolmsted.com. Okay, and thank you to Shayna. Very appreciative of this post, especially now after having read it in its entirety. There is definitely one hump that I couldn't get over, however, um, throughout this whole post. And that is the fact that personal responsibility has to be mentioned. Um, and it hasn't. It's not to say Shayna is condemning or ignoring this. But for me, a post like this really only works if alongside those teachings... We're also making sure that we're willing to look inward and change our own behavior if necessary. And it's such an easy trap to fall into, feeling as though other people are the reasons for relationships not working. Though, I think this article did a good job of not blaming others or being aggressive, we still have to be ready to question the roles we play, and whether or not we're doing right by our relationships, rather than simply exiting them if the people we're in relationships with somehow don't meet our standards anymore. If you make a habit of doing that and never considering the ways in which you might be the quote-unquote toxic person in question, you're likely to banish a lot of good people from your life, not to mention stunt your own personal growth. So, word to the wise, my friends. Time to wrap up, though. I thank you again for listening to both parts, and I thank Shana again for sharing. Hope you all have a great rest of your day ahead, and be sure to come on back tomorrow where we will get right back to more great relationship content and where your optimal life awaits.